648, this is Wednesday Sunrise Smart Start, our top stories, breaking updates from police in Greece. Two men arrested there after this raid at a home on Alcott Road. This SWAT raid started early yesterday morning when police say they recovered an illegal handgun all in the process. Now, 33-year-old Jeffrey Schertz and 19-year-old Christian Marshman, they were both arrested, charged with criminal possession of a weapon. They've been arraigned in the Greece town court and sent to the county jail. More breaking updates out of Rochester. An 18-year-old man rushed to the hospital after getting hit by a drunk driver. That accident around 11 last night on Portland Avenue. Police tell us the latest update from the hospital. The victim is in critical but stable condition. That driver, a 24-year-old woman, stayed on scene and was charged with DWI. Police say any other criminal charges or tickets will be determined at a later time. We are waiting for new details coming to us sometime later today about an hour long, 12 hour long standoff at the Grecian Garden Apartments. Police say they were initially called there to check on somebody, but they say that person grabbed a knife, tried to stab the officers. Greece police do tell us one officer did shoot at the suspect in response, but nobody was hit. Four hours, that person was communicating with police. They were barricaded inside the home, but he was later arrested, taken to a local hospital for evaluation. Investigators do clarify this had nothing to do with the raid scene on Alcott Road. Sunrise traffic here 10 minutes ago until 7 o'clock. Everything looking okay so far on our expressways. We haven't seen any major accidents to warn you about before you head out. Let's keep it that way, and we'll check that again at about 725. Happening today, the court hopes to move forward with opening statements in the trial for a man accused of killing a woman, setting their house on fire, and all while two of their children were inside. Twelve jurors so far have been seated for Sean Todd's trial. They still need alternates. He is accused of stabbing 37-year-old Lysandra Bagley at their home on Garson Avenue last year. Police say he then started the fire and the victim was found in the basement. That trial will pick up again today as the alternates are selected and they hope to have opening statements in the afternoon. Turning to Ontario County, where a level three sex offender and serial flasher will be in court for sentencing. This is Paul Gadrell. He pled guilty to numerous charges after a flashing spree in December involving multiple children and in different locations. That sentencing today at 1130. Also in court, the sentencing for the man who admitted to trying to rape and sexually abuse several women across Rochester. Last month, Hayden Suppressi pleaded guilty to charges related to the crimes. Police say he was responsible for attempted rape, several of them, from May to October of 2022. He'll learn his fate at 10 a.m. A Wayne County EMS employee is in court accused of physically preventing a woman from leaving a home and forcibly touching her. This is Jeffrey Nelson, who we are told was arrested after the victim reported he put her in a body hold, stopping her from leaving the house and following an argument. He's now charged with second degree unlawful imprisonment and forcible touching. Previously, Wayne County EMS did confirm to News 8 Nelson is an employee of theirs and has been placed on other duties after being charged. He was not placed on any sort of leave. A lot of reaction to this new vote in the Monroe County Legislature on whether to run a feasibility study for a public takeover of RG&E. It was rejected the first time and now the second time. But advocates say they are not done with the fight here. Ron Spitzer sharing their insight with us this morning. She spoke to them on this very highly debated topic. Iran. Yes, once again, the legislature decided not to move forward with the study in a 16 to 13 vote at last night's meeting. This comes as customer frustration continues from high bills and claims of poor customer service from the utility company. The estimated $1.5 million study would determine whether Monroe County or the city of Rochester would be a better utility provider. The city previously committed $500,000 towards the study if the county decided to go through with it. This move was heavily supported by Metro Justice. Their organizing director explains why they're pushing for a public utility while the communications manager explains that rg &E is working to better serve the community. Public utilities across the country are extremely common. They are 13 to 63 percent cheaper. They invest more in their local communities and they're actually accountable and transparent and twice as reliable. So we have a real opportunity here to be able to make an informed choice to get out from under the thumb of RG&E. In the past year and a half, we have worked extremely hard to make improvements to customer service, reliability, and resiliency. We're not opposed to accountability. We've heard our customers loud and clear. We've acknowledged that there have been issues in the past. We believe in meeting our customers where they are. We want them to know that we are here to help them. And again, they are our top priority. 
Iversha Roman, the president of the county legislature, explains she voted no on the study so it could possibly be brought back to the legislature for consideration again. Metro Justice says they'll continue to fight with several paths still open in the campaign for public power. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, Ron. The Rochester Animal Services Shelter on Verona Street is not taking animal surrenders for the time being due to overcrowding. It's just running out of resources to take in any new animals. Staff are urging people to help rehome these pets by fostering or adopting them. That campaign runs through April 28th. If you're looking for help, you're encouraged to explore online for direct home to placement services. Arizona's Supreme Court has ruled a 160-year-old near-total abortion ban is still enforceable. The law itself dates back to the days before Arizona was a state. Now, if uh, this does go through, Arizona will now be the 18th state to severely restrict the procedure ever since Roe v. Wade was overturned in 2022. The fight to bring home a Dansville man after he's been detained by the Taliban in Afghanistan. This will now be discussed before the Senate, a possible resolution here. Ryan Corbett lived in Afghanistan for 11 years before the Taliban's return to power. He went back to the country in 2022 to renew his visa and pay the staff of a nonprofit that he had started there, but he's been held there ever since. Now Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and the Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell are introducing a new resolution calling for Corbett's immediate and unconditional release. As long, long as Ryan is held by the Taliban, I will never stop fighting to bring him back home and reunite him with Anna, his children, his family as quickly as possible. They've asked the Senate to pass this resolution before Ryan's birthday, that is this Saturday, and his wife has released a statement on the resolution saying, quote, this resolution is proof that Ryan is not forgotten by his country, despite what his captors would have him believe. It is 13 straight years now with no playoff appearances for the Buffalo Sabres. Once again, officially eliminated from contention, taking on Dallas last night, number one team in the West and the league at this point. Sabres needed to pick up at least a loser point to keep their dreams going for a Stanley Cup. Playoff appearance didn't happen, though. Sabres drop it 3-2. It's another season and another early summer vacation for the team. They are now tied with the New York Jets for the longest playoff drought in the major American sports. Well, if all the heat yesterday had you thinking about summer, don't worry, we've got that good news. The 126th annual Lilac Festival kicks off exactly one month from today, May 10th, and it'll run all the way through the 19th. Tons of fun has already been announced, including the annual Lilac Run and the Art in the Park Walk. We've got the full list of all the activities, some of the headliners for your music. That is all available on rochesterfirst.com. I saw Highland Park for the first time here recently, mm -hmm. went again yesterday to enjoy those 70s. I am so excited for a lilac festival. It looks like it's going to be a great time. Yeah, the bud saw James forecast and said, not yet. Yeah. We'll hold off uh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't see any when I was at the park yesterday. Hopefully we line that up nicely with the yeah. festival. That is always the goal. I do think it's going to be a little bit early, so we shall see the April showers coming in full force today. We've got rain this morning, uh, dry this afternoon, which is nice, but it returns as we get into tomorrow. The next round, we'll be talking about uh, News 8 at Sunrise uh, for your Thursday. Uh, yeah, just kind of a soak or a stretch, really, Thursday into Friday. The weekend, Saturday, should be the drier of the two days. Uh, but no bitter cold there, at least, uh, over the next eight. All right, thank you, James. And thank you, everybody, for watching us here at Sunrise. Our next update in half an hour. Tune in to CBS Mornings. That is coming up next. Have a wonderful day. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.